Okay, let's continue talking about relationships within triangles and different special segments that we can draw uh, within a triangle. And we'll take a look at more points of concurrency uh, that result when we draw those lines on the triangle. Today we'll explore the medians and their point of concurrency known as the centroid. And then we'll also look at altitudes and their point of concurrency known as the orthocenter. Uh, so we're going to take a look at what relationship they have and how we can use those relationships to solve uh, problems involving triangles. So let's take a look at, first of all, the medians. So when we explore the medians, uh, we can do that on GeoGebra here. Um, and you can try this link out too as well. Uh, but we're going to take a look at a median. What is a median? Well, it's a segment that connects the triangle's vertex to the midpoint on the opposite side. Um, so if we take a look at the medians, we'll draw them in here. So I'm going from vertex to midpoint on opposite side. Vertex to midpoint opposite side. Vertex to midpoint opposite side. And you can tell that it is the midpoint because we've got these tick marks that show we're splitting that side into two equal segments. And you'll notice that those points all meet at one location. This point is known as the centroid of the triangle. So notice where the centroid is located. Notice this is an acute triangle. It's located inside the triangle. If I make this a right triangle, still inside the triangle. If we make it obtuse, it's still located inside the triangle. And hopefully that makes sense because we're going from a vertex to a midpoint. Uh, so these lines are staying kind of like the angle bisectors inside the triangle when they meet. <clears throat> Now, as far as special relationships go, uh, let's look at the measurements. Okay, so take a look at the measurements uh, as I go from D to G, which is 5, and G to A, which is about 10. Uh, FG is about 2.5, if I round up. GC is about 5, um, and E is about 5.8, GB is about 11.6. So you know, as we move this around, you know, look at the connections between those segments. Do you see any connections between uh, the segment from the midpoint to the centroid and then centroid to the vertex? Maybe you're starting to see a connection there. And as we move the vertices around, you know, see if that connection holds true. See if your conjecture remains the same. And now for the great reveal. Check this out. So it says continue to move vertices A and B and C around still. What does this diagram now logically imply about the location of a triangle centroid with respect to any of its medians? Isn't that amazing? Look at that. You are amazed. Um, can't drag A around. This box is in the way now. But if I move C, what do you see? What do you notice? that the segment, the median, is broken into three equal parts. And two of those parts go from centroid to vertex. One of those is from centroid to midpoint. Same thing, midpoint to centroid. Two of those parts then to the vertex. Centroid, or midpoint to centroid. Then two of those distances from uh, the, mid, or the centroid to the vertex. And that remains true no matter what kind of a triangle I have. And that is the special connection that we have with the medians. So we'll want to take that and write that down in our notes. Another special thing about the median or the medians and their point of concurrency is that if I were to take a triangle and balance a triangle on the tip of a pencil, um, that point would be the centroid. If I were to draw the medians in, um, they would meet at that. So it's also known as the balancing point. So let's take the time to write that information down so we don't forget it. So the concurrency of medians of a triangle. Medians of a triangle intersect at a point that is two-thirds the distance from each vertex to the midpoint. So since triangle ABC, the medians meet at point P, AP will be two-thirds of AE. And BP is two-thirds of BF. 
and CP is two-thirds of CD. So another way to think of this connection, if I'm looking at AP, if segment PE is, let's call that X, I know that AP is going to be double that, so we can call that 2X. That's another way to relate that connection that AP is two-thirds of AE. You know, if we break it into two smaller sections, uh, AP is going to be double PE. So let's apply that in this triangle. If these are all the medians, that would mean these segments are congruent. And it splits those sides in half. So if SQ is 8, find QW, this segment right here. Well, if that's the centroid, centroid to midpoint is going to be half as big as SQ. So QW will equal 4. And then SW is the length from vertex all the way to midpoint. That's the full median. So if this segment is 4 from QW, 4 plus 8 would be 12. And that would keep the relationship true that SQ is 2 thirds of SW. Because 8 is 2 thirds of 12. Okay, so that's the relationship with the medians and the centroid. Uh, let's see if we can find where the centroid is located if we've got a triangle with coordinates 2, 5. It's point F. 4, 9 would be G. And H would be 6, 1. Why don't you see if you can figure out which coordinates uh, the triangle would be located on. Pause the video, restart it when you're ready. Okay, so once I graphed the points of my triangle, I found the midpoints of each side. And I did that by counting from F to G as a lateral distance of two units. So I just went over one unit and found the point on the line. Same with FH was a distance of four units uh, left and right. So I just went over two and found the point on the line. Same with GH, it was two units over. So I just found the unit one unit over on the line. Next, after I found all the midpoints, I then connected the vertice to the midpoint on the opposite side. Vertex to midpoint opposite side. Vertex to midpoint opposite side. And those all met at the um, centroid. Sorry, I couldn't think of the name. So the centroid we see is located at 4, 5. And the centroid should always be inside the triangle. Okay, next, let's talk about altitudes. An altitude, by definition, is the perpendicular segment from vertex to opposite side. So in this acute triangle, go from vertex to opposite side at a right angle. Um, looks like this. In an obtuse triangle, in one of the angles, if I go from, for example, Q here, I can't form a perpendicular line with the tri inside the triangle in the interior. I'd have to draw an imaginary line uh, or extend the line out uh, PR so that I could draw a perpendicular line to where it would be. So the altitude will be outside of the triangle in that case. So no matter what the case, no matter what kind of triangle I have, so in an acute triangle, if I draw all the altitudes in, they meet here at point P inside the triangle. In a right triangle, this altitude goes right down the line of the triangle. This altitude connected to the opposite, opposite side goes right down the line. And this altitude goes across here. So they all meet on the triangle, right on one of the vertices. And in an obtuse triangle, since some of those lines have to go outside the triangle, for instance, this vertex goes to the opposite side. Uh, from this vertex to a right angle, connects right here. And this vertex to the opposite side, uh, sorry, this vertex to the opposite side, ends up hitting the side here. If I then continue those lines out, they all meet at the point here outside the triangle. So this is one of the unique ones in that they all have... You know, they all meet at one spot, so they're all concurrent. Uh, but the, the point of concurrency can be located inside, on, or outside the triangle. Um, so it's not like the centroid where it's always inside. 
So something to put in your notes, the lines containing the altitudes of a triangle are concurrent. Uh, kind of the unique thing about the orthocenter is that there really isn't much of a connection with the orthocenter with any of the other parts of the triangle. Um, the only unique thing is that they all meet, and they can meet inside, on, or outside the triangle. Other than that, there's no connection with line segments or um, equal distances to any parts of the triangle. So it's kind of the boring one, which is why we save it for last and kind of just go over it quickly. But it's important to know what an altitude is, that it's a perpendicular line segment from vertex to opposite side. So let's just take a look at um, the definition of an altitude and you know compare that to a median. So if we have an isosceles triangle here, uh, we want to prove that the median, the line going from vertex to opposite side, opposite midpoint, uh, is also an altitude. So think about how we would prove that. I've got it written out down here so we can take a look at it. But what we're trying to show is that we've got a triangle, ABC. Base we call AC. That means A, B, and B, C are congruent. And B, D would be the median to the base A, C. And we want to prove that B, D is also the altitude. So here's how we do that. Um, as I mentioned, these sides are congruent. It's, it's isosceles. Um, so C, D and A, D are also congruent uh, because if it's a median, this is the midpoint. D is the midpoint. So right now we've got two sides congruent. Uh, then we also have a shared side here within the triangles. So the two triangles, triangle ABD and triangle CBD, would be congruent by side, side, side congruence. And then since they are congruent, corresponding parts would also be congruent. Uh, so all these angles would have to be congruent as well. So since all the angles are congruent and now we have a linear pair between CDB and ADB. And since they form a linear pair and these angles are congruent, they are 180 degrees. And if they're congruent, each one would have to be 90 degrees. And since they are perpendicular, BD would have to be the altitude because it's a perpendicular line segment from vertex to opposite side. All right, so you learned a little bit about altitudes and found out that the orthocenter really doesn't have a big connection to anything. Just know that it's found inside, on, or outside the triangle. Then we also took a look at the medians of the triangle and found that they meet at the orthocenter and found out that there's a, a connection that one part of the segment is half as big as the other part um, of that median uh, when it's divided by the orthocenter. So you've got some practice work to do. Uh, that's all the time we have.